you might have seen, we started the five minutes with a sneaky video on the background. Um, some of you might are, are entrepreneurs and have been looking for business data of your customers, your prospects. Uh, if you're going to sign a deal with somebody, you want to know who's behind the company. And uh, there are public records in Belgium um, that are very hard to search and they're scattered on a, on, a, on a large number of government websites. So we came up with the idea of open this. We worked from the, the submarine, it's not yellow, it's green, but in the hallway. So at first our team was called the submarine team, but we renamed the project into Open Biz. I'm going to ask you not to Twitter it yet, because we're running. We're going to do a live demo. We were advised not to do that, but we're going to do it anyway. Uh, but if you're all going to Twitter our, our name right now, our URL, we're going to be uh, crunched under all that traffic. So if you look at those government sites, you can go to the first slide, please. Uh, and you will see Baumgastronal National Bank from Belgium, Monitor Belgium, Staatsblad, the Kresben Data Bank. All these sites offer useful information. That's better? Yeah, okay. They offer useful information, but it's scattered. And it's very hard to find that information in the interfaces they offer. Um, so, yeah, I have a problem with the slides here. Yeah, I go on, you can see. So, we try to solve that issue and we built a search engine that makes this data more searchable than what is currently being offered by, by the government websites. So we have been crawling, indexing that information, which is a PDF file, I won't get too technical about that. And uh, we overcome what is hard on these government websites, which is you have to change the settings on your browser, you have to accept cookies, they have interfaces that might have looked good in 1996, but are not really sexy in 2011. Um, if you overcome this issue, uh, if you want to search today, there are commercial players out there that do this. They actually repackage uh, Bureau van Dijk, uh, Trends, uh, and other players. They repackage the information that's actually public, they source it, they enhance it a little bit, and they will sell it to you. Uh, Bureau van Dijk up to 7,000 euro a year. Uh, Trends is 300, 360 euro per year. So for a small time entrepreneur who's just starting out, it's a lot of money. So we want to lower this barrier and make it really easy to find information of prospect customers and suppliers. I'm going to come to the demo right away, but we have visualization. Uh, we have Mr. Zustrassen here. We looked up information in our interface and we find all these companies, this whole cloud of companies around. Um, <laughs> really interesting. If you Can you zoom here, we will actually see more. I hope so here. If you just click there, yeah, you have a full screen view. So, come on, come on. Just here, here, here. Can we make it? I can make it. I'll go on. We're going to do the live demo now. So uh, we'll, I'll put this slide up at the very end because we're losing the very uh, precious time here. Um, we built a search engine in, re in which you can search full text. So you can look for a name and you can find which person, what has he been doing? Kite Bank, Zedas Industries, New Tree. Uh, Joseph Zuskas, and actually he's called Joseph, we found out. Yeah, it's my father. Okay, well, anyway, so it's perfect. Okay, that's right, that's fantastic. Okay, well, that's everyone is in a while. So, United Mondial Telecom, well, I'm not going to do his pitch here. He has a lot of companies, but you can just find all this related data, and it's very interesting because you can see that at some point they create companies, these guys here together. They, they do in, uh, tunes, and then they sell it to Belgacom, and if you are interested in what other people are doing, you can trap an entrepreneur. You can say, hey, that's interesting. This guy is, is, is teaming up with that other guy that I know. Maybe I want to join a new project. Or, oh, that's a new competitor and they have a good track record. I, I should get into that. So this is our, that's where we've got. We've, we've got 14,535 public records. Th th those are all the uh, sheets that were published in January by the Monitor Badge, Belgian Staatsblatt. So these are text documents. Yeah? We scan them, we index them. So if you type Zustras, and these are two older ones that we've indexed, you immediately get the information and we hyperlink to the source document. We do not store, because eh, there might be legal issues, we do not store this document, we link to the original source of this document. Yeah, that's very important to note. And here you can go and see what Monsieur Zustras and Jose have been doing with early tracks. Yeah. That's correct, you did this, this is an authentic document. <laughs> wow, good, search and works. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, if we move on, let's go to the browser. We, wanna, we, wanna see, we don't want to see this type of sheets. We want to see a real demo here. Come on, come on. La I launch that browser. browser. Okay, just a minute. Okay, so, we're in there. How are we going to make money if everything is free? This is about startups. We're going to offer alert services. You can actually say it's for free if you have 
up to five people or stakeholders you want to trace, but you say, hey, I want to get all my suppliers in there and know when something changes, they move an address or they have new shareholders or they have new directors, you get notified. Like you might get notified in LinkedIn and other services. That's where we want to make money. The information will be free, but you will get extra service on top of that. That's a very hard balance. <laughs> Be okay. <laughs> so thanks a lot. Thank you. We had an awesome team. We pulled this off into this. So just imagine what we can do if we had a little more time. Oh, Q and A for the judges. Go ahead. We might have slides that, that already answered those questions. So let's get to the start. Go ahead. Any questions? So you you in the freemium model? Yes. Uh, oh, oh, what's the market you try to address? Because there it's Small. Belgian. It's only Belgian because it's Belgian information, and so we will scale globally. What do you think? How many, you know, how many uh, small companies in Belgium? Yes, we have a slide on this, so please put it up there. What's your... 100. Now we need to take those down, sorry. Oh, uh, that's too bad because we have the whole revenue model and everything in there. So we, 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 our revenue model was built on 1% of the Belgian companies using this service and using the freemium model. And pay how much? Paying of the small Belgian companies and... Um, the business metal people jump in. What was the average we put in? I think it was five euros per month for already a very heavy package with a few hundred alerts that people will be receiving. That's a turnover of? Turnover, how much was it, guys? It was a, quickly a few hundred thousand euros. 40,000, I think, first. after the first year. And it was scaling up to 200,000 in the third year. But, but we have very low costs, so we don't have to invest yeah. anything. I understand, but you won't scale much, you won't raise much. So the only way to, to scale yeah, internationally, internationally is if you would sell the models, if you would sell the search engine to other governments, or uh, if this is something the government should do, uh, open this, uh, this information or make it easier. Um, but I, I, I think that you could sell the crawling software, it's running on Amazon. We, we've done the 15,000 documents, with, with, you know, it costs $6.20 $6 to do this. That was the CPO cost of this whole operation. This competition on scanning and indexing documents of Belgian companies like Iris and many. Yes, we used to know the source library. Yeah. We looked at the software, it was closed source, expensive software, the server based you version. The, what, what, what? Tesseract. So we used an open source. It's actually the search engine that Google is using to index PDF files. It's open source, we use it, we compiled it, we put a little bit of logic in there, and it's running magically. Any question there? Sorry, time's up. Time's up. Time's up. Time's up. Time's up. Okay. Uh, so you, you're trying to use the data available from, from different governments. Yes. How, how, was your, um, how was your feeling about open data? Were they easy, easily accessible? Or do yes. you miss a part of it? No. How, how is the, how is the uh, practice of the government treating open data? Now? Okay, so uh, this is a very interesting you bring this point up. So the data, they are there, 30 seconds, but you're not allowed to do what we've done. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a huge gray zone in what we've done. So we think that we've not crossed this gray zone, but we've come across disclaimers saying, if you systematically do what we've done, you are up to I'm at five years prison. We joked about it. Uh, Ramon answered, well, if you go to prison, it's like a co-working office, but you sleep overnight. <laughs> but uh, we didn't want to cross that line. But at the same time, I must be honest, many of those disclaimers also say, contact us if you want to do stuff with this commercially. Only you can't see who you have to contact, and there's no contact numbers, and it was during a weekend, so that was even harder. But so, uh, no, the disclaimers say, don't crawl us, don't systematically do this, but the information is treatable. Um, it's a pity, it's XML, and then sometimes they, they hide the text layer, so we have to scan it and OCR it. It could just as well remain XML, and then we have the text. <coughs> the OCR. But that's, 